conducting research in an academic environment has been around for forever, right? And when we look at the development of science, of math, uh, that's all research. That's kind of what we think of when we think about research. But what about businesses collecting data, analyzing data, and making decisions? Well, that's actually not that old. So let's talk about the history of marketing research in terms of businesses collecting data, uh, analyzing it, and using it to inform their operations. More than just the anecdotal story, so you have a business, you've, you've lived those experiences, and so you make decisions based on that. What about the formal collection of data to inform the operations of an organization? Well, that's only really been around since about 1879. So in 1879, N.W. Ayers and company constructed the first survey used in North America. So this first questionnaire related to business and it examined grain production in the U.S. Then we have, uh, or sorry, during that time, the agency that the um, N.W. Ayers and company, what they did is they wired state officials and publishers throughout the country requesting information on expected grain production. So to create some forecasts as to how much uh, grain is predicted to be uh, available. And this information was then used by companies like Nickel Shepherd Company. Uh, they used it to manufacture agricultural machinery. So if we expect there's gonna be more grain production over the next couple of years, then people are going to need to buy more equipment. We see the first uh, formal marketing research process created by Charles Coolidge Parlin, a schoolmaster in Wisconsin in about 1911. Parlin was hired to gather information about customers of the Curtis Publishing Company to help them increase their advertising in the Saturday Evening Post. So they wanted to determine whether or not putting in, put, paying for advertisements in the Saturday Evening Post would actually be beneficial. How much of their customer base actually uh, reads that particular publication. And so Charles Coolidge Parlin is considered to be the father of marketing research. Let's see if I can get, there we go. Now, prior to the Industrial Revolution, there really was no need for this type of data collection and analysis. You worked uh, very closely with your customers. You're a butcher, or a baker, you are a seamstress, you're making clothes, you're interacting directly with the customer. Uh, and so you know what they want, right? That's the anecdotal, the stories. Um, and so you're able to make decisions for your organization based on that lived experience. But with the Industrial Revolution, we start to separate out those who make decisions for what the company does from those who actually interact on a daily basis with the customers. And we even further separate that by having a separate group who's in charge of more of the operations, creating the product itself. And so as we create that separation, there is a need for that data collection and analysis and then making recommendations for what the organization should do. The A.C. Nielsen Company, it started its own marketing research firm in 1922. And so A.C. Nielsen, what they're famous for is for keeping track of how many people watch different TV shows. So back before we all started streaming, uh, what it used to be is that if you were interested, so you're McDonald's and you're considering whether or not to put an ad in the TV show that's airing this evening, you wanted to know how many eyeballs were watching that TV show. And then as we get into the ability to record TV, how many people are watching it live versus how many people are watching it later. And then as we can have the ability to kind of fast forward or skip through ads, right? How many people are, are watching live versus skipping all those ads? So this would help inform the McDonald's, these other companies as to whether or not they were worth, they wanted to advertise at that particular time slot. And it also in, informed how much those commercials, uh, that cost of that time slot m might be worth. Now, AC Nielsen doesn't just do TV shows. Um, it also does other products. So when I was a kid, 
we were kind of this AC Nielsen family. So I don't know how we got signed up to be this, but we used to get things in the mail that were test products and we would try them out and then we would fill out a survey after the fact, giving our feedback. So for example, we'd get a container in the mail and it would be a, a type of cereal and we would test it and then give them the feedback about it, what we liked about it, didn't like about it, and then send that back. And so this is how AC Nielsen, then there are a third party that companies could hire to help inform them in terms of how successful a product might be, as well as help them in terms of the terminology that they should use in their advertising and marketing. So when we tested that product, what came to mind? How would we describe it? Uh, and that could then be used to help promote and connect to other families. So AC Nielsen starts doing this marketing research for other companies starting in 1922. Uh, they became the largest marketing research firm in the, in the field uh, and worth over $5 billion in the 2010s. The challenge, of course, today is that there are a lot of people that are collecting their own data now. If you're Amazon and you're streaming, uh, you have your own data. And if you are, um, if you are working with your clients through your own website, you're collecting that data. And so AC Nielsen as a third party isn't the only choice, right? Google does data analytics and provides those services to anyone who's uh, got a website or e-commerce. And so now there's lots of different companies that provide that service. And because businesses and organizations can now do a bunch of that analysis themselves, they don't necessarily need those third parties as well. And so as we look at our videos, we're gonna look for you. How do you collect that data? And how do you do that analysis yourself? So whether you're providing consulting service to other businesses or uh, whether you are doing that analysis for your own company, we're gonna show you how to do all those pieces. Uh, just a little bit more on the history. So the 1930s was the first marketing research class. In the 1940s, we start to see uh, statistics being used to help do that analysis. So not just number crunching on the calculator, but now more advanced, more complicated um, uh, processes and analysis. In the 1940s, we see the first focus groups uh, for businesses to inform their decision making. And as we get into the 2020s uh, that we are today, we're now doing machine learning and AI to do even more advanced versions of data analytics. Um, and that gets us into that prescriptive um, analytics. So simulations uh, and cognitive AI where we can automate a lot of this uh, using artificial intelligence and machine learning. So if you're working through all the videos, uh, we will be getting to the um, prescriptive analytics, cognitive AI, machine learning uh, methods to analyze data. So we're gonna be building, right? We're gonna build first the, um, how do we design our research project? How do we convert that challenge issue we're having into a research question? How do we design the research? project itself, how do we collect the data, how do we analyze the data, and we'll look at all different levels of analysis from descriptive, diagnostic, prescriptive, um, predictive, cognitive. Uh, we'll look at ones that are more uh, old school, right, where we are doing stats that have been around uh, for quite some time, and then we'll look at some new models as well in terms of using AI for it. So lots to learn uh, as we move through these videos. All right.